Well, Freddie, thank you so much for taking the time to chat to, to us today. It's an absolute honor having you on our radio show. So uh, thank you so much. And I've got to say, welcome to Melbourne. Thank you very much. Yeah, I, I just landed like a couple of hours ago. So it's lovely to be here, but much colder than I was expecting. Definitely, yes. We have turned on some very, very cold weather at the moment. But, uh, Freddie, tell us a little bit about what you're looking forward to with Metro Comic Con. Are you looking forward to being able to to get out there and meet some of your fans? Yeah, especially uh, especially because you know I've done a few conventions uh, up in the northern hemisphere. I've been to America and done a few across Europe, but never anything you know down the, in this part of the world. So it's exciting to meet a whole new bunch of people. Are you aware of how many Australian fans you have? Of course, because uh, Pennyworth and Shadow and Bone and also Masters of the Air were very big shows here. So are you aware of how many Australian fans you actually have? No, not at all. Um, so that's that's why I came down to find out. Um... <laughs> awesome. So I guess there's a lot of people out there with a lot of questions. So um, to start off with, I just wondered, where did your passion for acting come from? Because reading your bio, it seems that your your passion for acting was there for a very, very young age. So where did that passion actually come from? Um, I was very lucky that when I, when I was younger, I had amazing teachers, uh, kind of English teachers and drama teachers who just kind of really kind of supported and encouraged any curiosity to do with the arts and to do with acting. And I just, I just got lucky, I guess, that, that, that they were my teachers and, you know, threw myself in headfirst into school plays and you know youth theater and all of that stuff so yeah just it just started from there and I kind of fell in love with the idea of it being like a team sport you know yeah everyone's in it together working together towards one thing so how have you found that early theater work that you did how has that helped you with your film and television work over the years as well um I'm I guess I guess there's a there's an immediacy to theater you know there's an immediate response which is totally different to film and TV but that collaborative thing that team sport sort of spending six weeks in a rehearsal room with a group of people and then sharing that story with the world is not that's not dissimilar to working for six months on a TV show with a you know the same group of people and then sharing it with the world so I think that that's the thing that I really enjoy about my job and um, yeah hope we get to do it for a long time Definitely. Well, once upon a time here in Australia, you rarely saw theatre actors do television, and you certainly didn't see television actors do theatre. But nowadays, yeah. a lot of the big theatre productions that we have here in Melbourne have um, television and film stars in them. Is theatre something that you'd like to do more of in the future? Yeah, definitely. Definitely. I mean, the the kind of the holy grail is getting to do both in yeah. equal measure, I suppose. Um, cause I think that one informs the other and one feeds the other and yeah, I'm, I'm glad that there is a more kind of fluid movement between the two now because there's great people working in theater who deserve to be on TV and there's great people in TV who want to test themselves in theater, you know? Yeah. So when you first started to do television and film, one of your first films, of course, was Wonder Woman. Um, what was that like walking onto a film set like that and seeing the the scale of of that production? What was that like for you as an actor? Yeah, a, a bit overwhelming to be honest. It was. It's one of those sort of you're such a small cog in a huge, huge machine. I would say. Uh, sorry, having said that, though, Patty Jenkins, who directed it, made everyone feel like they were incredibly important to this story and this scene and whatever was happening at that moment. Whatever was going on for them was like just as important as what was happening to the leads and all of that. You know, it was a very um, welcoming and so yeah, it was intimidating walking on. But then after about five minutes, there it was very welcoming and kind of supportive. Definitely. And from there, of course, like we said before in our intro, you've gone on to things like Pennyworth and Shadow and Bone. Those shows already had such a big expectation behind them because of the fan base um, from the work outside of the television show itself. How did you find getting cast in roles in something like that that already have a bunch of fans expecting so much from them? Yeah, I mean, I... Particularly with Shadow and Bone, I, I, I was aware that there was a kind of pre-existing fan base of the books and that people, you know, held the books very dearly and, and were understandably nervous about an adaptation of, 
you know, there's there's books I love that have been adapted, and um, you get concerned that they're not going to get it, and the people that they've put in charge of making it don't see it the way that you see it, or all of that stuff. So, and I, I so I understand that from a fan's point of view, and I think all I all I ever wanted to do was kind of bring a little bit of something that I saw in the source material and sort of combine that with the team, the creative team that I was working with, but also, you know, putting stuff in there for the people who love the books and love, love the source material. It's a kind of three headed thing, you know? Yeah. I I was talking to a comic book artist, um, at one of the conventions once that, that works for DC. And he said that Mm. when you come into DC or into Marvel or anything like that, it's like you're joining a family. Did you kind of find that with your role in Pennyworth, that it was like joining the DC family? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I wasn't there for long enough. I say I'm, I'm a distant cousin of the DC family, you know, yeah. <laughs> but but it, but the very very lovely family to be a part of in a small way. Um, yeah, all the all the cast and crew on that were great. Really, they'd been filming for a little bit by the time I joined, so they were up and running and sort of took me under their wing. But they were great. Yeah. Now, you also feature in one of my favourite shows from the last few years, Masters of the Air, which I thought was just a an absolutely um, brilliant show. And I was lucky enough to be able to see the first two episodes on the big screen as well, which was um, uh, yeah. amazing. Well, tell us a little bit about that for you, because that is such a an important television show um, about an historical event that actually happened. What was that like for you mm-hmm. being part of Masters of the Air? I'd say it's probably the most excited I've ever been to get a job because I I grew up watching Band of Brothers and the Pacific and it's obviously the same creative team, executive producers and uh, production companies who made it. And then also, you know, with Kari Fukunaga, I'd I'd loved his films for a long time. So working with him was, so, you know, all of that added up to make it one of the most exciting jobs, kind of one of the most exciting phone calls to get saying you're going to get to be a part of it. And then, and then the making of it was, sort of similar to uh, Wonder Woman in that the scale of it in terms of TV was bigger than anything I've ever seen. I mean, I, ah, it, the the way that Apple got behind it was really kind of exciting. They really believed in it and they believed in sort of what the creative team were trying to do. And then when they brought us in, you know, what we were all trying to do with that. Definitely. Every episode felt like a feature film. Is that how it felt to yeah. you on set as well? Yeah, definitely. The kind of attention to detail in terms of, you know, historical accuracy and the research that we did and, that you know, we did a two week boot camp before we started filming so that if we had to salute on screen or stand to attention on screen or, or indeed fly a plane, you know, we did a lot of time in plane simulators and stuff to make it feel as authentic as possible. And that, I think, is what sort of made it feel more like a feature than, than a TV series. Definitely. Well, Freddie, we've only got you for one more minute. So to finish off, what would you like to say to people out there who are thinking about coming along and meeting you at Metro Comic Con this weekend? Definitely come along. It's going to be a great weekend. There's loads of amazing guests who I'm also very excited to meet. Um, I will be jet lagged, so who knows what's going to come out of my mouth. 